here we go people let me drop a little bit of music here not this one let's do this get some harris heller stream beats up in here all right here we go it's not it's not going to do anything that's remotely as good as the midnight and all that retro synth wave what's up everybody welcome to the stream if you're new here my name is jerry this is simply cyber over the next hour we are going to be shredding Cybersecurity games, CTF, Cyber Rangers will be learning, but it will also be playing a game. It's going to be a good time. I want to say what's up to some of the regulars in here. Hey, BSEC, hey, Cyber Munchkin. Saw Kerry in here early. JoJo's doing good. Nate M, James Randolph, Dan Reardon's in the house, people. What's up? Let's give some love to the squad. Good to see you guys. Definitely got a banger for you today. Hopefully Jenny Housley gets in here. <laughs> you know how... It's really Jenny Housley playing, and I'm just smart hands up here. Every single Monday at 4 o'clock, I'm playing Haiku Pro or World of Haiku live on stream. Today, it's going to be Haiku Pro. We're going to be digging into an offensive security-based range called Got Mail. And as many of the ranges do on Haiku Pro, the name has some kind of indication of what we'll be doing. It is an SMTP mail server that I think we're going to be compromising uh, spoiler alert, as I'm prone to do, I have never, like, I work here, but I've never played this range. I, I love the opportunities to show, like, real experience and real first reactions and stuff. This isn't um, produced where I played this range, like, six times before, you know, earlier today. And I'm just going to, oh, look, I stumbled into the right answer. I'm really good at cybersecurity. No, it's hard. It's work. Uh, we'll do it together. I'll probably have to Google some stuff. Definitely be be uh, querying, um, querying the, the community. So stay tuned if you want to play along. Uh, obviously, if you have a Haiku Pro uh, subscription, you'll be able to play this range with me or uh, go on afterwards and, and <laughs> get past where I got stuck. Uh, but all those things are good. Yeah, AOL throwback. If you know B-Sex pointing it out, uh, back in the day, you got mail. That was the sound effect that launched kind of modern... Um, my, like basically that was like the sound you wanted a little your little hip little hit of dopamine that was you got mail all right so let's do this if you got any questions while we're playing holler at me um <laughs> carrie's telling jokes here uh only cost 45 cents because a 50 cent concert feature, featuring nickelback that would be quite the mashup i might say um what's up oi 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 rafidi wasim good to see ya all right, well, we're going to get right into it. Hopefully, we can play along together. I'll be watching chat. I'll be dropping in. Hope everybody's having a good Monday. Uh, mods, it, I, I don't typically ask for mod support on um, on this stream, but if you guys are there, mods, I might need your support at some point. Let's have a good time and get into it. Oh, my God. Water's so good. Oh, really quickly, just speaking of so good, I don't know if they have these in Australia, uh, Wasim, but in the United States, if you haven't got this stuff yet, there's these like little uh, pouches and it's kind of like Kool-Aid. Remember like Kool-Aid, you'd like rip it off and pour it in. It's like that, but they're called like, 
liquid IV or something? Have you tried this? I'm not promoting liquid IV. Well, I am. I'm not affiliated with them, but like, dude, it's awesome. You pour it into your water and your water turns into like a super energy drink. It's sick. Definitely get it up on that. Like I can't drink water now and, and enjoy it because I've had liquid IV. All right, let's get into here. Oh, Charles knows what I'm talking about. Charles got into that. Oh, cool. Well, seems did the uh, GRC masterclass. It's wicked good. Yeah, Chris Rock. Oh my God, Chris Rock's in the house, people. Oh my God, Chris Rock of, um, I will kill you and how to overthrow a government DefCon talk fame. Good to see you, Chris. Oh, uh, Chris, this is a lot of pressure. I'm going to be doing an offensive security range today that I've never seen. Chris Rock's in chat. Boy, oh boy. Be sure to say hi to Chris, everybody. Craig given love for Liquid IV. Okay, so this is Haiku Pro. You can see really quickly, just to give you a quick tour, um, recent badges I've won, my global points and stuff, kind of where I stack up. Um, they've got some streak information. We've got some insight here into learning paths for your intro to ethical hacker. You can see Gotmail is kind of the culmination range on that, but we're we're not interested in taking our time. We're interested in getting right to it um, in, in getting right to it. Also, Chris Rock, by the way, good to see you back in the land of uh, internet and, and things. I know you were uh, outlanding there, or offlanding, or whatever it's called. Otherworlding. <laughs> whatever it's called. All right, guys. I'm all up in here now. You can see Haiku 101 is the range that we did two weeks ago. By the way, if you are new to CTFs, if you are new to cyber ranges, if you're new to the industry, and you feel a little intimidated by cyber ranges, you feel a little bit of imposter syndrome, Sign up at haikupro.com, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll drop a link in chat in a second. But some of the ranges are free. This range, Haiku 101, is free. And I literally uh, collaborated on the development of this range, and I made it explicitly designed for someone who has never done a CTF range. It literally walks you through like what a cyber range is, what flags are, how you get them, how you interface. It's like a very meta range for a cyber range. It's... I think it's awesome. Go, You can play it for free. All you got to do is get an account and log in. It's free. Try it out. See if you like it. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but we're going to be doing Got Mail today. So let's do this. Okay, so I used the search engine feature. I've got the Got Mail. You can see here, it kind of looks like a, well, my big head's in the way. It looks like a Pokemon card. Uh, it tells you like what OS you're going to be using, whether it's offensive, defensive, or forensics. Remember that in Haiku Pro, they have three, ty three types of ranges depending on the skill you want to develop or test. Offensive, which is really, really common for cyber ranges. Defensive, which is like um, uh, Wireshark, uh, uh, log analysis, PCAP analysis, forensics, and, uh, or malware analysis, binary exploitation, uh, those type of things. Uh, or not binary exploitation, but vulnerability discovery. Um, and then there's forensic ranges, like uh, carving out evidence from um, a disk that a bad guy thinks he actually successfully wiped and stuff like that. Also, you can see the range score and some of the skills that you'll learn in here. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're presented with uh, the skills that we will be learning or developing while we're in here. You can see I like to look at this personally and get, um, we do need more blue team content, Midori. We're working on that. Um, in fact, really quickly, Midori, this PCAP recap is the newest range. And this is uh, a pretty blue, it says forensic. You could argue forensic or uh, defensive. Uh, it's, it's more of a forensic because you're analyzing what happened, but it's a good one. Um, I'll actually, like spoiler alert, I'll be playing PCAP recap two weeks from today on the uh, March 20th stream. Okay, so got mail. I just want to point out quickly that these skills you get are also kind of an indicator. If you're new to CTFs, the way that they do it at Haiku Pro, this kind of tells you a little bit of what you might be thinking about, like SMTP enumeration, editing exploits. Oh boy. All right, so we're going to be doing some exploit editing. We'll figure that out. Guys, I'm not an offensive security professional by any means, so I, I, I will need some support. <laughs> Chris Rock, Jenny Housley. All right, guys, the objective of this range, email is the backbone of the enterprise environment, but what happens if everyone can see your emails? You've got mail. They've got your mail. Everyone's got your mail. <laughs> Leverage the public exploit on the email server and take over the system. All right, let's go. So um, 
Haiku Pro in this range is hosted in AWS and you get a full in the browser instance of Kali Linux. All right, so we don't need a VM. Um, what is this? I'm reading chat. What's what's Zach talking about? You can do it, Jerry. Oh, thank you, Zach. It took me a second. I thought you said you can do it for Jerry. All right, that's for Zach giving me some love. Um, currently learning Snort. That's very nice. What's up? What's up, Vincent VT? Love it, love it, love it. Oh, good. James Randolph did some. Got a little bit more confident. Okay, guys. So check this out. Um, two things to note here. Like we're in the Haiku Pro. Uh, right up here is kind of like where we interface and submit our flags and stuff like that. Get some information about the range. This right here is a fully baked instance of Cali. So some cyber ranges, um, some cyber ranges you'll do, and you'll um, you'll have to like spin up your own VM and then connect over a VPN or something like this. You can see here, this is a full uh, Cali Linux uh, with a bunch of tools and stuff like that. So. Um, this is all in the browser, so all you need is a web browser to play. All right, let's figure out what the actual um, challenge is. Ooh, Sergio with his first interview tomorrow. Boom, baby. Sergio, crush it, my friend. Entry position. Hey, Sergio, really quickly. Um, really quickly, my friend. Okay, hold on one second. Um, Sergio. Go here. I'm going to drop a link in chat. Um, Sergio. Okay. That, hold on. That's for you, Sergio. Sergio, let me know you can access that. Okay. Um, I, that's a link to this right here. Sergio, 12 interview SOC analyst. It doesn't matter if you're not going for a SOC analyst interview. If you're going for any cybersecurity interview, there's a very good chance you'll get asked some of these questions. And I give you both why the question's asked, I give you a very reasonable answer to give to the question, and I explain why the interviewer um, is asking you a question like that. So if you don't have a good answer, like if, you know, if your answer, you, you'll you'll know like what they're trying to dig to and you'll be able to answer it, okay? So um, definitely review that, my friend. I've had multiple people tell me that it was, um, it was, it was, it was significant in the success that they had in the interview. So please take advantage of that. All right, back to Haiku Pro. Check us out. Um, we get the objective, which is still the same uh, thing that we talked about a minute ago. It's the same as on the front end. By the way, you only get one hour to complete the range or 45 minutes, which is no no problem for us because we're, we're straight uh, hustlers, right? Gather information on the machine to find a vector of attack or an attack vector. That should be, that should be re rewritten. What's the name of the application running on port number 25? Okay, so now check this out. What you might do, okay, what you might do is this, right? You might say, hold on one second. You might say port 25, right? Now port 25 is uh, SMTP, I'm pretty sure, right? So you can see port 25 SMTP, right? So... We could say SMTP, but here's another thing to notice. On cyber ranges, the flag, the flag, this is the flag. We're looking for the flag. So you could say SMTP. It's not going to work. Why? Wrong answer, Jerry. Uh, that ain't going to work for you, son. No. So you could tell right away. It's looking for something other than SMTP. So it's looking for the application. All right. Now I know how to search ports. Okay. I... <laughs> I could search a port for you, all right? All day, I could search ports for days. But maybe you don't know, right? Maybe you don't know how to search ports. So there are hints over here on the right. You see these hints? If you get stuck, this is why it's good for all skill levels to play cyber ranges. Don't, oh, BSEC, you're funny. Tell them you know me and you get hired, right? Exactly. So we're going to use Nmap to port scan. But if you didn't know... Uh, you could use the hints. You could also, guys, don't be shy with Google, right? Don't be shy with Google. Like, I, I, this is like how you do ranges, right? What's the name of the application running on port 25? Okay, I'm just going to copy that. How do I find out what application is running on port number 25? I just took the challenge and put it into a question. Okay, and now you can read 
you can read some information. You can educate yourself, right? The, the CTF isn't like Wordle where it's just like a daily puzzle and you try to solve it out. You're supposed to be helping learning. So if you don't know how to do this, Google it, research it, figure it out. All right, so Dan Reardon's dropping some knowledge here. Lego sex saying uh, NMAP. BSEC and said NMAP. I'm going to show you guys. Check this out. BSEC, or excuse me, Haircut Fish and Chat. If you're watching on LinkedIn, excuse me, if you're watching on um, YouTube, which you should be because it's the best experience. Right? So 25. And then the IP address. Note the target IP address is right here. This is like all the ranges are going to have like a target IP or a collection of target IPs. So let's see what happens when we take Dan Reardon's option or haircut fishes option. Okay. All right. So that worked. Okay. Nmap is network map. It's a, it's a basic application that everybody in the industry knows about. And it basically, um, scans network ports to see what, if they're listening, if they are, they'll engage with the ports in different ways. And this, in this instance, it did a TCP handshake, I believe. Um, now, I want to point out, BSEC said NMAP, BSEC said NMAP port 25. So, you could also say, okay, now, check this out. I did what BSEC said, and it told us the service, but it did not tell us the application. That dash SV, that dash SV that um, Dan Haircut Fish told us to do, that's what gave us this extra little bit of information, which is probably what the flag is. So let's go ahead. Open SMTPD. Let's check it out. Open SMTPD. Oh, yeah. That's how we do. That's how we do. Good job. Good job, everybody. Everyone in the industry knows about Wireshark and Nmap. Security needed. Yeah, everyone in the industry does know about it. If you are trying to get into the industry, Nmap, you absolutely should know. You might not use it in your job, right? You might be a GRC analyst. Hey, Jenny Housley, good to see you. You might you might be um you might be a GRC analyst and not use Nmap ever, but it's such a seminal tool. It's such a ubiquitous element of our cybersecurity community that you need to know what it is, okay? People, put it this way. People assume you know what Nmap is, okay? Same with Wireshark. How do you save the scan to a file? Uh, I don't know. Let me do Nmap. It's probably dash O if I had to guess. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Man Nmap. Grep, output. Um, dash OG. Oh, cool. If you want greppable format, you want to talk about OG? Chris Rock. <laughs> Chris Rock's OG uh, InfoSec practitioner. Okay, so there's a, like a whole collection of dash O uh, and then whatever the file spec is you want. Um, whoever asked that, Lego sec, maybe. Yeah, it depends on what you want to do with it. But there's definitely ways to do it. Okay, all right, BSEC. All right, so let's look at the next challenge. You can see here on the um, range, when you get an... Oh, my God. When you get the answer right, it automatically gives you the checkbox on... It gives you the check mark, and then it automatically populates to the second uh, challenge, okay? Which is this right here. In order to complete the exploit in the next step, we will need to obtain some information first. Okay. Good news. Get your 90s hacker voice ready because we're going to be exploiting in the next step. Yes. Yes. Wow. See if you can find some valuable information somewhere. What is, what is piece of information you found? All right. What is a piece of information you found? I'm glad I'm playing this. Okay. So... Let's see. It is just a mail server. Hold on one second. So because I only searched, this is interesting, because I only searched port 25, 
I actually don't know what else is running. I don't know if there's like a web server running on some weird port. So let's go ahead and run a full end map scan across all 65,000. There is in fact a web server running. Boom, shakalaka. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect to the um, the web the web browser and see what's up. Hack the world, hack the planet. Oh my god, I need water. All right, so I went to the web server, and there is in fact a README file there. The plot thickens. Let's go. Site's currently under construction. Jim at jimswarehouse.com with questions. You know what? This isn't even that ridiculous. This is not illegitimate that this would be here. So let's go ahead. We're going to use our guacamole to copy it out. And um, let me go ahead and add a note really quickly. All right, I guess I cannot add a note. Um, okay, I'll just do this. This is terrible, but I'll... I'll <laughs> you want to talk about, like, goober? I'm just going to go ahead and stick it up here in my... Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick it up here in my um, my my address bar. I'll, I'll come back to that later. <laughs> All right, so let's get rid of guacamole. And let's figure out what we're doing here. Um... What's piece of information you found? Well, I guess I did find Jim at Jim's warehouse. I don't know if that... What is going on here? Why is this... I don't know why the, why the range is messing up. All right, here. I don't know if this is the flag or not, honestly. It is! All right! Cool, 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 cool. All right, so now we're on the final um, the final gig, exploit the vulnerability. The long pole in the um, the long pole in the tent. Uh, actually, that's a good point, BSEC. BSEC points out that we know jimswarehouse.com is the domain, so we can um, we could go start doing OSINT on that domain name, registration, all that. Yep. I agree, BSEC. I don't know if you're telling me about the 1,000 ports or not, but um, let's see. I'm looking at chat really quickly. What site is this, or how do you download it? Taekwon Gong. This is ha Haiku Pro. Uh, let me see really quickly. There we go. All right, GBOR says you absolutely need to know Nmap and Wireshark as an internal IT auditor. Command bridges during outages. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it's like knowing ping. Like, just you would just do it. Like, it, it helps with all sorts of stuff. All right, what are we doing? Wow, we got 69 people up in here. What's up, people? This is cool. All right, so we answered that question. The next the next one says, let's use MSF console to exploit this vulnerability. Oh, boy. This is Mike, uh, Microsoft. Oh, my God. Nerd. <laughs> Metasploit framework, okay? So check this out. MSF console... Is that going to work or do I have to do dot slash? Come on, bro. What do we? Okay, here we go. Starting the Metasploit framework. I'm in, right? Got to get that. You know what? I need that. Um, I need that uh, sound effect B sec. The one, I think it's Morpheus and I think it's Morpheus and um, Matrix when he's like, I'm in. Check it out. Metasploit's always... Metasploit always has good ASCII art. Always, always, always with the good ASCII art. We're in. That's right. We're in. Okay, so Haiku Pro and World of Haiku. Rasta Monk wants to know the difference. Haiku, World of Haiku is a complete um, standalone single-player video game. It teaches you basic Linux and basic uh, cybersecurity concepts. If you don't, are just getting into the industry or you enjoy cybersecurity like I do. Um, World of Haiku is an excellent option. Haiku Pro is a cyber range. It's like puzzles and capture the flag contests and stuff like that. The learning barrier is a little bit higher on the ranges, but don't 
Don't think that it's impossible because there is a range called Haiku Pro 101 that is free on the Haiku Pro platform that you can use for free to understand what ranges are and stuff like that. Yep. So uh, I would I would say Rasta Monk, um, check out Haiku Pro 101 at HaikuPro.com and then World of Haiku if, if you want to play it. I like it. If you want to see what World of Haiku is, come back next uh, Monday because I'll be playing World of Haiku live on stream. All right, so I'm up in the Metasploit console. Um, is um, is Searchploit... How do we... Um, can we do Searchploit... Do you do Searchploit from my, uh, um, Metasploit console or do you run it as a command line binary? Okay, I guess you run it like this. All right, so we're going to be using... Um, uh, search blade. I'm going to, can I increase my, um, font? How do I increase my font for you guys? Um, sorry guys. I was hoping I could increase my font and make this a little prettier for you or more easy to read. Can you guys see this? Okay. Harish, it's cool. Okay. So Taekwon, we can do it from here or in the, um, we can do it from here or we'll do it from here then. Uh, do I need, hey, do I, can you guys read this yes or no? And do I need to figure out how to increase the font? Let me know. Yeah, we're going to explain. Oh, 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 okay, cool. Thanks, BSEC. Okay, so here's the deal. We have found open SMTPD, right? Which we can... We can Google. Right? All right, looks like it's just a basic cheapo, uh, you know, thing. So now let's say vulnerability. Okay, so here's a Qualys blog post from 2020 about a remote code execution. We don't know what version of Open, SM, open SMTPD we're running. Um, so let's go back to Haiku and let's actually use Searchploit. Now, I'm going to say Searchploit and, uh, I think I'm just going to try Open SMTP and see what happened. Open SMTPD. Okay. So we have six exploits. Um... Let's see. Now I'm thinking, and I'm gonna need some help, everybody. We got exploits for days. I'm pretty sure this one we can't do because it's it's local, and we're not local, right? Um, and the rest of these, um, we can do. Yeah, Metasploit is built on Ruby. But this is the local privilege one, so we're not going to be able to do that. Um, we don't want to do local privilege escalation. Local privilege escalation. Remote code execution. That one looks good. And mail from remote. So let's try this one, okay? Because it does say... It does say... Uh, oh, my God. It does say... Use MSF console to exploit it. So this one's going to be in Metasploit. So let's use Searchblade to pull down. You always want to pull down a local instance of the... Um... How do we pull it down? Is it dash M? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Okay. So... I'm I'm just trying to like get reminded on how to how to download this thing. Um okay, so you can just use the number. Okay, cool. So let's do this. This is what it looks like when you're learning. Okay. Search exploit dash M four eight zero three eight. Okay, and then I'll do um Four seven nine eight four. Also, four seven nine eight four. 
Okay, so now we should have those both. You can see here, we've got them both in our um, local directory. So now we're, we're good. Um, let's let's look at the um, the Ruby one. Why can't I do that, bro? Oh, I'm in Metasploit, idiot. <laughs> um, all right, so this is the um, Metasploit Ruby one. Sometimes there's like some talk at the top. Okay, cool. So let's do this. This one looks promising. What is the business or is it a home lab prioritization? Security needed. I don't understand the question. Thank you, Jenny Housley. So you can just type in open SMTPD. You don't even have to type search exploit. Holy jeez. Open SMTPD. No, okay, okay. So let's do this one more time and then I'll I'll pull up the module. Okay, we're gonna do this one right here. So what it, how do we um is it Oh God, what's the command for my for Metasploit? I don't really use Metasploit all that often. Is it load? Is it module? Is it module? Help. I need an adult. Um It's definitely It's definitely like load or something like that. Show no. No, no, no. Run is when you've got the, 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 the payload all loaded up. There's like a way to like load the module. Load path? Yes, load path maybe. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Use. Thanks, Craig Ninja. Let's see if it's this right here. Again, I might be getting this wrong, but I, I definitely know you load the module and then you like configure it. Mm, that didn't work. Load. Okay, what am I doing wrong? You only need the word search along with OpenSMTPD. Use Linux. What am I supposed to use here? Linux slash remote slash 48038. Oh my God, I'm, I'm an idiot. Check how to load a, a module in Linux. I mean, in Linux, in Metasploit. Jerry, roll on the floor. Oh, read the manual. I'm playing. Yeah, no, no, I get it. Dude, here's the thing. I don't I don't run these commands very often. So, there we go. So, it's exploits we want to be loading up, right? So, is it Yeah, load path. Oops. Oh my God, fat fingers here. I can't even type. Um... Okay, no. Metasploit framework. Oh, haircut fish, is that right? Use exploit path. Okay, let me try that. Let's do modules. I'll try it if this doesn't work. All right, Linux. And then it was remote. No.
Oh. You reckon it's going to be under SMTPD? Ooh. Let's try that really quickly, huh? Oh my god. This is what failing This is what failing up looks like. Search instead of search plate. Okay, hold on. Okay, thank you Jenny Housley. Let's take a look. Linux Etsy. Oh, thank you, Chris Rock. All right. So th this is the one that we were going to try, and I was just like a total, <laughs> a total donkey about it. So let's say use exploit. No, is this not the right commands? I'm sure. I'm sure some of you more power users are like yelling at the screen right now, just like Jerry. I can't watch you. You're terrible. All right, here we go. Options. Okay. All right, so when you do options, you see the configurable settings. So we are going to do valid mail recipient, which I think, wasn't it Jim at Jim's Warehouse or something like that? Of course, I, I didn't write it down. I put it in a... <laughs> Oh, such a, such an idiot. Um, okay, Jim at Jim's Warehouse. Okay, okay. So let's do this. Okay, and now we're gonna um, we have to set the recipient to, um, and I believe. I believe the format is set options. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm typing this in wrong, but I'm pretty sure you're like set options, recipient two, and then, um, okay, I think that's how you do it. Unknown data store, maybe it's set option. Oh my God. Oh my God, what is the, um... oh, just set. Oh, thank you, Jenny. This is why learning in group setting is better. And this is why CTF events at um, conferences are so fun. Okay, so now watch. When you do options, you could see it's been changed to Jim at Jim's warehouse, okay? So now we wanna change the, um... The R host, so set R hosts uh, to 10.161.113.189. Oh, yeah. It's coming together now, baby. Look at this. Yes. All your SMTP server belong to us. All right. Now, localhost and port 443. So I'm going to... Um, let's do this really quickly figure out what our IP address is. So we're going to use IF config to look at our own machine. And you can see here, here's our IP address. And if you didn't know how to read that, you know, World of Haiku would show you how to do that. But our IP is 10. Uh, so set L hosts or L host to um, 10.161.113.189. Dot 200. Okay. So now if we look at it, you can see we've configured all our things. Um, now, one thing I will point out, I'm pretty sure this is a remote, a remote, um, a remote call because we're setting our listening port. So we actually do need to um, set a uh, netcat listening port. Okay, so you guys, you probably couldn't see it, but, oh my God. But I, what I've done here is, I, I've, I've, I've executed this command, okay? Which is netcat, which opens a socket listener. And then these, um, 
arguments, which I don't even know. I forget what these arguments are. V is for verbosity, but uh, the other ones I don't know. It's just like that's what you typically do when you're throwing a listening service up. So we're going to put this. Oh, my. You know what I don't want? I don't want you thinking. I don't want you to tell me how to resize my, my window, Cali Box. I don't want to go full screen, bro. Okay. Trying to make this pretty for you guys. All right, here we go. All right, so now what we would do is run, I think. Let's do run. Handler failed to bind on 161, 200, 444. Oh, is it supposed to do the listening port for you? Well, isn't, isn't Metasploit a, full, a fully featured uh, <laughs> software? It does it for you. Okay. Let's see. I had no idea. I, I didn't realize that Metasploit was that that script kitty. <laughs> like, you don't even have to set up your own listeners. Okay. Um, so what did it do? It started a reverse TCP handler, ran a check. That's okay. It connected to the mail server. It said hello and sent the sploit. No big deal. Um... Then, you know, it sent this mail, like whatever this is. And then it waited and then it said. So am I on the machine? <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is straight truth. This is one thing that has always stunned me. Like I just popped this box. I have a shell on this box. And I didn't even realize it until like looking and working through it. Guys, this is something that, um, I, this to me is something that I, and I've been doing, I've been in InfoSec for a very long time. I don't do red very often. This is something that always blows my mind. I got the shell and I didn't even know it. You know what I mean? Like, like normally when you when you like log into a machine, you get a nice, pretty uh, console interface with like maybe the, uh, you know, your username at computer name, and then maybe a slash or a dollar sign, a blinking cursor. You know that you're at a command line. Sometimes when you pop a box like this one, I didn't get a command line or anything. I was just dumped onto the shell. So. Uh, really uh, interesting and, and you know for me like I didn't even know I popped this box it's awesome uh, so be mindful of that now um, what you can do is say um, can I do IF config or no IP config no it's, a, it's, a, it's not a Windows box LS now there's the flag there's the flag right there okay now, before I put in the final flag, I actually want to mess around a little bit. So can I do, um, I'll do, I'll do a listening service on, um, port 1337. Now, can I, um, what, what is the, um, netcat to a listening port? Um, I'm just going to look at netcat really quickly. Netcat host port. Okay. Let's look at this. Can I do netcat? Is netcat in here? Man, netcat. Um, so netcat's not, oh, netcat is on here. So can we do netcat? Um, I'm just curious. 10, I get the IP again, right? And my, my, my red, my professional red friends, my cyber mercenaries, Please, please let me know in chat if I'm if there's a better way to do this. But what I'm thinking is, I just popped this box and I don't have a very good interface. Like the way I'm interacting with it is really bad. So, it, what I want is a more feature-rich um, um, oh, it's not working. So I'm I'm literally writing it to the shell. I was want I was thinking again, silly me. I was thinking. 
I would very much like to have a command line. Um, can I can I do this netcat um, dash lvnp? Maybe set it there. One three three seven, right? And then netcat ten one sixty one dot one one three dot one eighty nine. Because what I'm trying to do is get a, a a cleaner looking interface. Connection refused. Ten one sixty one 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 three. Why would it refuse? Hmm. Yeah, what's up? If you're in chat, say hi. We're just popping shells. No big deal. <laughs> I say it like I know what I'm doing. But anyways, I thought I had a listening service here. Um, but... Uh, oh, I meant grep. Okay. Netstat, I wanted to see if there's a listening service here, okay? Grep, listening. Okay, Netstat not found. All right, so I am Hacksaw. Yeah, that's right. Hey, so really quickly before I finish this um, range, again, let's cat the flag out. You can see here, here's the, here's the flag. Whoops, no, I don't want to abort the session. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, okay, hold on. Dude, I want to give a special shout out to Harris Heller, Stream Beats, for this jazzy little number that we're rocking right now. All right, so there, there's the flag. We will get credit for this flag. I was just curious. We, we are like Macklemore, popping shells, popping locks, popping <laughs> popping locks. Um, I don't know how to um, get a cleaner shell. If anyone, I, I just is there anyone in in chat who is a red teamer? I would love to get a cleaner shell. Okay, crypto packet zero. Thank you. Is that Python command? Can I run that? Do I run that from the victim? Let me see. That would make sense if I ran it from the victim. Let's do Python three. That's one thing I have learned by doing um, these ranges and working with other red team people. I found that there's certain things that like, they just do all the time. Like this right here, I've seen this multiple times. Hold on, hold on chat. Don't push the chat up so high. I can't read, I won't be able to read this. All right, here we go. Python 3-C, import, PTY, spin, uh, and then tack. And, and uh, let me, I did the import. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god, idiot. Idiot! This is such an unstable shell. Alright. Oh. Uh. <laughs> hey, Crypto Packet, thank you so much for the stable shell. So much nicer. Oh, look at me. Dude, this is butter. This is butter. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and submit the um, submit the flag. Oh, you know what I did? we just did to this range collectively? Jenny Housley, Chris Rock, B Sec, Crip Pack or Crypto Packet. We straight yeeted this range out of here. So every time you complete a range, uh, it gives you score ranking, some inf some meta information now. We did not we did not use any hints. Now I would argue that we did it as a team, so maybe that is slightly hints. Uh, you can see how quickly we, we moved through um, different flags. Now this is I'm doing this as like an educational live stream, so you know I'm not really going for, for stats here. Um, but ooh, I like this. Everybody knows what we're talking about here, right? Flawless execution, fatality. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let me just do something really quick. I got one sound effect. Flawless execution. Finish him. Yes. Thank you. I will. All right. So we're going to go back. To, oh, I'm going to rate the range. I actually found that range quite enjoyable. Uh, good challenge. MS console is all about good times. So you can leave a, you can leave a, um, a, a review, right? If you think the range was could be better, could be you know worse, 
things you like, things you didn't like. Um, you also can get badges. Um, there is a badge for this range, Got Mail. Um, I'm not sure why I wasn't awarded it. Maybe, you know, maybe it's because I my account uh, is a little different than other people's. But there you go. Let's bring it into chat, guys. Woo! How we doing? I love it. Let me let me read chat here. Aaron KG is up in here. Tried to search for you on LinkedIn, couldn't find you. I am in the top five percent on the platform, but it's not fair. I have access to a lot of stuff um, that you know, like I'm wearing a haiku shirt right now. Thanks, Carrie. So what did we do in that range, guys? We used Nmap. We um, did a little bit of OSINT, right? I mean, we could have with the guy's name and the domain name and all that stuff. We definitely got up in Metasploit's business. We exploited. So, you know, if you look at the cyber kill, actually, you know what? Let's do, let's do some learning really quickly. Come with me. Come with me and learn. All right. Let's pop, let's pop this open. All right. This is such a hideous graphic. All right, here we go. That's in Spanish. Majority of the audience is not spe speaking Spanish. Um, okay. So this is the cyber kill chain. Holler at me. Listen to this. Recall. So all, not all, Chris Rock, confirm or deny this. All like, you know, attack operations, threat actors, red team operations, pen testers, follow this framework, follow this kill chain. Again, if you're a professional red team or pen tester, ethical hacker, cyber mercenary, um, confirm or deny that. But let me just tell you what the cyber kill chain is. It goes through all these iterations. Recon. We did a recon on the box. The first thing we did, we did Nmap. We found an SMTP server. We used Nmap to probe it a little deeper and find out what version of the application of Nmap we were running. Boom, it's open SMTPD. Give me some. Then, because of that, we go on to our weaponization phase, right? Our weaponization phase is looking at what what type of vulnerabilities there are for open SMTP using search exploit in Google, we identified a pretty sick payload. That Ruby file, 4838 or whatever, that, you know, Unix such and such. We found a module that can help us. Then our favorite part, exploitation. This is when you actually commit the crime if you're doing this on a system you're not authorized to be on. All right. This is when I hit run and it popped. And then guess what happened? Boom, baby, boom. We had a shell at that point. Um, at that point I did install, um, a, a more stable shell. Thank you. Uh, crypt, crypt pa crypto packet zero. We installed the stable shell. Also, we would want to install our payloads at this point. If we're running, uh, like Redline info stealer, raccoon info stealer, um, empire post, uh, exploitation, uh, frameworks, emotet, like uh, not emotet. You, you would already, that you wouldn't use that. That'd already be on there, but like uh, TrickBot, right? Like whatever. You're installing, installing, installing. Maybe you're disabling um, Defender and uh, security solutions or whatever. Then we didn't do this part. We didn't do this part because we're not, you know, next level maniacs. But if we were, we would have installed a C2. There are many different C2s, command and control frameworks. I recommend if you want to know more, if this is like, oh my God, this is so cool. Give me, give me, give me more. Go check out the C2 Matrix. This is uh, run by uh, George or Chiles or or, Chil or Chiles. I might be screwing his name up. I'm sorry, George, if I am or Jorge. Oh, I think it's George. Um, anyways, the C2 Matrix. Lots of great information on different like what you go. You go way down the rabbit hole of C2. Like this part of the kill chain right here. This part. You could you could <laughs> you could just be a C2 expert. Okay, like that's how much stuff there is. Uh, with C2. So giddy up on that. And then we did skip that because we didn't need it for the range. But we took our action, which for us, the objective um, was to get that flag. We catted it out to a file. We uploaded it to the a scoring engine and we won. Wow. Guys, 
Rinse and repeat. This is the cyber kill chain. This is whether you're playing a CTF or you're pen testing for a bank, and the objective is to see if you can get into the CE, like if you can get into HR's personnel pro, like um, salary profile, right? If you're if you're pen testing for like a dating website and they want to see if you can get to the pictures, they created a special account. Um, and put some photos in there with with a keyword in the photo, and they want to know if you can find that keyword because that would mean that any uh, user of the platform's account could get compromised. That could be the objective, right? It doesn't matter. It follows this methodology all day, every day. Okay, that was a little impromptu. Um, get to getting to know your cyber kill chain. You could use the medium article did on the THM cyber kill chain room. Oh yeah, so Haircut Fish has probably got it. Chris Rock is confirming it. Chris Rock's confirming it, which means absolutely that that's the way we follow it. Thank you, Chris. No excuse, Jerry, you're better than the professionals. Oh, oh, <laughs> I did. no, 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 no. That's one thing also like uh, people should appreciate about information security. I've been doing this for like a very long time. There's a lot of people who have been doing it InfoSec for a very long time. I will be the first to tell you there is a ton of stuff in information security that I don't know. I, I, I can't do. I don't know the first thing about Android exploitation, right? I got a little Android burner phone the other day. I tried to install the Android SD, SDK kit. I was going to put a little simple uh, program that uh, piped, like, did like a sniffer and keylogger for. Um, uh, accelerometer data on the phone and push it off to a server I controlled. I couldn't figure out the stupid Android development studio. It's like Java. So there's like a million dependency files that make no sense. It's like the most bloated thing just to do a hello world example. I got so mad. <laughs> yeah, that's right, William Welch. I yeeted it. So, so here's my thing. I don't know anything about Android uh, um, software exploitation development. Okay? So... Dude, I just played this game and I I was like stumbling like a like a child c coloring with like a fistful of crayons instead of like, you know, holding a paintbrush using Metasploit. Okay? Not everybody knows everything. There's always learn to there's always room to learn, and that's another thing that some people don't realize when they break into the industry. You there's there's a million things to learn. You got like you need you don't need to, but it's very helpful if you're a lifelong learner because you're just going to keep learning stuff, right? To be to be good. Security needed. Hello, I couldn't find you on LinkedIn. Oh, I get it. I get it. You guys are sharing connections on LinkedIn. That's perfect. What What are your thoughts on API Sec University? Pierre B is asking. Uh, I don't know what that is, man. API Sec University. Let's check it out. Um. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can't. I can't speak to this. My my suggestion, and they're using the right stuff here. Actually, this is kind of cool. So here, here you go. Here's what I would do with this. Oh, wait, you guys aren't looking at this. Here's what I would do with this. I would find someone on LinkedIn who says they graduated from API Sec University, and I would DM them and ask them their experience. I would also look at their employment history and see if they worked at API Sec University before asking them. That's what I would do. Second thing I would do, and I'm just, this is just coming to me right now. I'm going to drop this link in chat. Guys, there's a lot of great information here, right? Like you don't need to sign up to the OWASP juice up. You could, you could spin that up on a um, Raspberry Pi. Some of these things you can just spin up on, on uh, Raspberry Pis or AWS VMs. Um, yeah. Follow these links to the tools. This is pretty cool. Get some of that. All right. Interplanetary file system. Yep. IPS. That's a or IPFS. That's a new one. Threat actors are using. All right. All right. We're just about out of time here. Jenny Housley, be good. It was great to see you. As always, Jenny. All right. Guys, I want, I'm going to boogie out of here myself. I want to thank all of you for being here today. We had record numbers, 86 of you in chat today. Uh, Dynamite. Good to see you. Hopefully, you guys got some value out of the stream. Hopefully, you learned uh, something, not only about Haiku Pro as a platform for learning and for 
uh, doing cyber ranges and having a good time. Uh, but also, you know, just the cyber kill chain and why we do these things, right? Like playing these games is fun, but the point is to learn. And like, here's the deal. I want to just re reiterate this. When you do a cyber range, like you're not supposed to not have access to the internet. Like you're not supposed to have all the knowledge on how to solve the range. And if you don't have it, then you fail because you're not good enough. No, like the whole point is to challenge yourself and push yourself and learn in an engaging, practical way. If you just read a book on how to use Metasploit framework, and then you sat down at a console, you're not going to be like lead hacksaw. Okay. You need hands on skill, like hands on keyboard to, to practice as I just demonstrated. Cause I, I've done Metasploit many times, but I haven't done it recently. So I'm like, I know it's something like set options or use options or whatever. Okay. Be good, everybody. Thank you all so much. Special shout out to Chris Rock. Thanks for being here, Chris. Appreciate the, uh, the support of the channel. Chris, hey, Chris, while you're in chat, did you end, did you ever get your shirt? I, I don't think I ever got confirmation on that. Cause like I lost tracking once it left the United States. Let me know. I would appreciate it. I hope you did. Thanks, Nathan Thomas. Appreciate you having there. Crypto Packet, thanks so much for the stable shell. Love me some stable shells. My pleasure, Anonymous. My pleasure, Rasta Monk. Be good. Hopefully you guys can join tomorrow. I'll be streaming at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Of course, Craig Ninja, you got it. I did, man. My stupid kids didn't tell me to write. <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. I love it. Oh, Steve Kitty. Yeah, guess what, Steve Kitty? Um, there's some big news dropping pretty soon, my man. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with some news that's going to be coming out. I don't have dates, but I know it's very soon, okay? Thanks, Fraud Dog. Thanks, Nadim. All right, guys. It's been good. Take care, and until next time, stay secure. Yeah. <laughs>